Mark, it is really good to have you here. Thanks for uh, coming in and joining me here. Today. I'm thrilled to be here. It's great to talk to you. I appreciate it. I, I don't get a, a chance enough to actually interview my my good friends, and so I am honored that you came into Pure Matter and that you're we're getting that chance. And I, I want to talk to you about all kinds of stuff. Okay, let's do it. So um, first of all, how are you doing? I'm doing great, actually. <laughs> we we uh, we're you know like you, we're all we're all keeping busy, and uh, but it's, it's it's this is an exciting time for a lot of us. There's you know books are out and or coming out and. Uh, and new sites are launching, and, and uh, we're playing with Shareology, which is fun, and so this is a good time. Well, speaking of books, your book has been awesome. I mean, you're speaking, you're just telling me you're speaking around the world, and, um, uh, you know, tell, tell everybody a little bit about the book. You were, you, you uh, The World Gone Social. A World Gone I mean, Social. How, uh, how much bigger than you can get than the world <laughs> well, that goes the, social? The, the title comes with certain expectations, doesn't it? Uh, <laughs> Uh, I, uh, I wrote uh, World Gone Social, How Businesses Must Adapt to Survive with, uh, with Ted Coyne. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it, it was an interesting project. It, uh, you know, we, we, we tried to encapsulate every, everything that social has done to change our business models and, and the impact that it's had on, on the economy as a whole. Well, the trouble with doing that is as we're writing, social keeps changing. Every month something new came out. Every, Every, every day a, a company would do something amazing on social. We say, oh, that has to be in the book. Or, <laughs> or, they, do something, editing or right. they do something <laughs> really freaking stupid and we say, that has to be in the book. Yeah. Right? So, so it was a long project, uh, but it was, it's fun and, and the response has been amazing. And, and, and now we're, you know, we're, we're talking to companies all over the world about about how to get involved with social and and not just you know have the account on Twitter and not and not just have a LinkedIn group but, but actually engage and contribute and, and provide value and cut through all the noise that we're all frankly really tired of and do so people, it's been fun. Do people still not? I mean, you know, social's been around now long enough that we can say it's been around. Um, do people are they still learning? Do you oh, think that they're still trying it, to get it? Uh, uh, not only are are people still learning, but especially some of our Old school companies, um, you know, brands we all know, mm. they still have no clue. They they they're still broadcasting at people. They're still they're still um, tweeting discount codes. It's 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 sad in in a lot of cases. But uh, we are seeing little little pockets of excellence, as, as my business partner Sean Murphy says. Little even inside those big dinosaur companies, we're seeing little groups that just kind of take over, and and we see the work that they're doing, and it's quite encouraging. Oh, that's great. Um, so what is, um, actually, let's just take a, a, a quick direction change here. Okay. You, how do you, how, you have five children. You have a grandchild on the way? A, uh, a six-year-old grandchild and another one on the way, yes. Yep. And you live in Seattle. You used to live in Tahoe. Mm -hmm. you're, you have one of the most awesome eclectic backgrounds, and, and you, you're juggling so much. How, do you, how, do you, how, do you, how are you doing all that? Well, my wife would say I don't sleep enough. That's, that's the main thing. Um, but I, I love what I do. I, you know, nobody, nobody has to tell me to get up and uh, uh, get out of bed in the morning. I'm, I'm ready to go. So, you know, throw a little uh, workaholic tendencies in there. And, and um, you know, we... We're not making widgets that we sell on the, you know, in Walmart. We're we're helping people. We're we're helping young careers. We're helping emerging leaders. We're helping companies develop a better way to talk to their customers and, and create new products. And that's you know that's not a bad way to make a living. Mm -hmm. And you get to do that also with young people. Oh yeah, through U Turn. Uh, U Turn was our first uh, uh, community, our uh, a, a talent community. And at U Turn, we help uh, young careers, uh, recent graduates. Uh, college students mm -hmm. uh, figure out what what their role in life is and what their value is and and it's you know it, it I guess we could call it personal branding whatever but we go much deeper than that we we ask we ask people two questions we say what are you really really good at and who will pay you to do that and and it's funny even as you know 55 year olds if we can figure out those two things we're in pretty good shape so we start you know 18 19 22 23 years old we help our community think about that stuff now you know, before they start down a path that they don't enjoy, or, or before they end up doing what their parents wanted them to do, but they have no passion mm -hmm. in doing it all. How do you figure out what you're really passionate about at 18 or 19? You don't. That's the problem, I, I right? I do it in my 20s. No, I no. <laughs> no, but but we. So that's the problem, though, right? We do kind of what we think we're supposed to do, 
or we pick a career or a major based on what's practical or based on what's hot, we really have no idea what we're doing. So that's why at U-Turn we talk a lot about the importance of mentors mm -hmm. and internships and, you know, get your butt out there. Have some fun. Don't just, don't just stick your nose in a textbook. Go, go do something amazing. Mm. So what do you what do you do with them? Uh, this is a community that you have mm -hmm. in return. How do the, how do you cultivate this kind of um, uh, community that helps each other? Or yeah, how, we, how does it work? Um, we have a, a huge informal mentor network, and you know there isn't a person in the world that doesn't want a good job and doesn't need a good job, mm -hmm. right? So so the baseline's there, right? Uh, uh, four four million new college students. Uh, enter enter uh, higher education every year, and they all need help. So I'm looking for uh, college for my daughter right now. So I'm going to you know right now. You know, and then we is. need to talk to her because because <laughs> we go to college and and let's face it, we 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 think college is still it's it's a um, rite of passage into adulthood. It's a first chance to be alone, independent. Um, maybe the first chance to explore our adulthood a little bit, right? But we don't we don't. College can't just be that place you just go have fun. You get to go party once in a while. You get to, you know, you get to go be yourself for the first time maybe forever. It needs to be, it needs, there needs to be a little, a little, a little impetus behind it to say, look, this is what I want to do for a living. If I work hard right now, I can get where I want to go. And that's, and that's what U-Turn helps people do. Great. So where, where are college students now? Um, what kind of world are they growing up in? As I mean, and I can I, I know that socials now it's a, that's a new thing. Mm -hmm. But what do you? How are you coaching them through this well, this new um, th these new things? This is this is a crazy time. I mean, we you know for decades we 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 lived what we now call the big lie, right? Air quotes always with the big lie. Uh, go to go to high school, get good grades, maybe play some sports, be a good leader, right? Be a good citizen, earn your way to college, get that degree, and the American way is there'll be a job waiting for you when you get out. Right? That's what we were all raised for decades, generations, right? And now, not the case. We have people with PhDs working at Starbucks and Target and mm -hmm. McDonald's, right? So, And yet they can't get my coffee right. <laughs> so what's wrong with that? Maybe that wasn't the PhD. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so so we, we help them focus on the, this new reality that you that you got to work your butt off and... and you know, you're competing against you. You went into school with four million other other new students, and you're going to graduate with four million others. And how are you going to stack up? And yeah. what's that look like? And who did you work with? And who do you know? And and um, uh, I have a good friend, AJ Thomas, and and we were talking today, and she said uh, to me, Mark, it's not what you know, like it used to be, or even who you know, but who knows what you know, mm -hmm. right? And this is like what you guys do here at Pure Matter, right? You help people market what they're good at. Mm -hmm. Right, what their value is, and that's that's we do the same thing except for mm -hmm. college students. It's such a I can only imagine it's such a hard time to to uh, for them to actually feel like their resume is everywhere. The resume is their statuses, so everything they've posted is going to come back to haunt them. And you know, to, trying to tell them that is is really hard to do uh, after the fact. Well, social social is uh, is a dual edged sword, right? Just like for companies and brands, it can be good and it can be bad. Well, the same is true for young careers, and we've. Unfortunately, we're, we've learned that the hard way over the past six, seven, eight years, but now people have finally got it. Oh, there, there is no privacy on social? Now I get it. So I won't put that picture on, on Facebook with underwear on my head or, or you know, all those red solo cup pics. I'll, I'll keep those private. I'll, 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 I'll put those somewhere else, right? So we're getting smarter, and, and we're getting, frankly, we're getting more mature. Uh, social media is... For, for personal brands and corporate brands, it's maturing. We're, we're learning as a society what works and what doesn't. And it was kind of the Wild West for a while, but we're getting there. Good. Well, um, I, was, I was just recently speaking at a, at a college uh, here in San Jose, um, at San Jose State, and I got asked a, a great question um, by, by the students, which, by the way, I just had such an incredible time talking to Isn't the students because they were just That's so the, energetic. The best and, audience ever. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I've talked to a lot of audiences, but this was one of my favorites. Um, for exactly that reason. So, um, but the question that that got me was, what what's the one piece of advice that you would give to a college student to change how they are entering into the work world? What 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 is one thing that you would tell them? Do this, and it will make a huge difference in how you enter into your career. Well, uh, uh, I get that asked that question a lot because we yeah. speak on college campuses all the time, and I'm with you. My favorite. It's my favorite audience in the world because they get it, right? They're living this right now. There's, there's a clear sense of urgency and, and the passion that, 
that we can exhibit at that age is much different than at my age, right? So love, love the conversations. But when, when I get asked that question, I say the same thing almost every time, and that is you, you have to realize that, that your career isn't a destiny, your career isn't preordained, your career is not based on the major that, that you chose before you had any experience or any knowledge of what you really wanted to do, but it's a competition. And, and you go from one starting line to one finish line, and as soon as you hit that finish line, you get to celebrate a little bit, celebrate every little win, but then you ask anybody, you're, that, that's, the new, that's the new starting line. Mm. And now we're on another race. And if, if we realize that our career, our lives, our professional, the professional side of our lives is a, is a lifelong competition, mm -hmm. we get a little fired up. Mm -hmm. And we know, we are, you know, what kind of athlete ever showed up to a major event not prepared, mm -hmm. right? Well, if you realize that's the same kind of energy you have to put into your career, then you go to networking events with a different attitude. You go to on-campus events with, with a different approach. You maybe volunteer or run for office, you know, where you wouldn't have before. It's once you know, once you completely understand that 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 your professional life is a competition, it changes everything. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love mm -hmm. that. Well, it applies I, to I, I all of you, us, I right? I wish I talked to you thirty years ago. <laughs> I wish I would have talked to me. Thirty years ago. <laughs> so, um, so let's let's uh, let's. I want to talk to you about that. How how is how's your career been? How is it? And where do you see it going? Well, I, I, I love what I'm doing right now, so I can't imagine doing anything different right now. But, I'll, I'll, uh, you know, I, I started out as in the military and, and then was an engineer right here in Silicon Valley for, for a long time. A couple blocks from here. A couple blocks from here. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and, and I loved that for a while, but, but I found out, you know, I chose engineering because it was practical and it paid well. And Let's face it, I was a kid from rainy Oregon living in, in Sunnyvale, California, working in San Jose, palm trees and, you know, everything you'd want, right? Um, and I hated it. I just, it just sucked. It just wasn't me. Wow. And it took a while to figure that out because you have to work through, you know, the guilt of making all this money and I don't like it. And, but I, I just threw my hands up one day and said, God, this just sucks. This is, this is not what I'm supposed to be doing with my life. And, and and I've been working for myself ever since, and in one form or another. And uh, I just I just wouldn't want it any other way. So how now? What so where do you see yourself going? What's what's happening with you? Well, I uh, I love speaking. I love I love especially to the students. And and now with a world gone social, to to sit down and get you know across from a from a CEO and have and have her go. Wow, I get it. Mm. I freaking get it. I I see the value in this. Mm. Right and see those lights go on. That 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 appeals to me uh, tremendously. But here, as you know, the problem with that is it's not repeatable and scalable. And I'm a startup guy, right? So everything has to be repeatable and scalable. Mm -hmm. So we we are doing. We're following the lead of a, of a lot of our friends, uh, Ted Rubin, Tamara Cleary, and we're 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 developing. Uh, Sean and I are developing a, 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 some online courses that that will be repeatable and scalable, and and will make a difference without us having to get them on an airplane. And, we're really excited about that. Cool, very cool. Well, that I'm I'm excited to take part to uh, see how that goes. And um, what what is um, one thing right? Where do you think that we are going to be in the next few years? How do you think social is going to evolve? I think here's the key. well, and we've said this all along. I mean, when I when I first started uh, my very first business in 1990, the thing I would tell everybody that we worked with is it's all about the relationships. And you know, building strong relationships, and then eventually, when the time is right and it's mutually beneficial, leveraging those relationships. How can we work together better to, to be better, to do better, to do good? And so we've been preaching this a long time. Now, social comes along and makes that much easier, mm. right? So, so social's worked out really well for us. So, so I, I, um, I, I'm excited to see what's coming next. I'm excited that, as we talked about earlier, that it's stabilizing a little bit, and we're figuring out. What works and what doesn't. I'm I'm real excited that people are starting to cut through the noise and, or actually, maybe better put, start stop throwing out noise, mm -hmm. um, and focusing on value. and And I think that's, you know, there's so many of us that are doing good work and we're sharing our knowledge, and and we're investing in each other, but we're still working independently. And I think the next stage is we're going to start sharing and collaborating and working. And and we're gonna we're gonna build a model collectively, informally, however it works, where where we actually start doing good together, and I, that, that's what I'm most excited about. Oh man, me too. 
Me too. And you just got me jazzed up just listening, <laughs> listening to you talk about it. Um, what? What? Uh, we'll just leave off with this uh, one question. What? Where? Where? What will you tell your grandkids on um, what they can now do with their careers? Oh boy, that I, nobody's ever asked me that before. I, you know, I am not a big, uh, you know, that whole follow your passion thing. That is. That is the worst freaking career advice we've ever given anybody. <laughs> it just, it, we, we've been saying it for a decade now. We know, we know it sucks, and we're and some people are still saying it. Uh, but, but I, but I do think we have to love what we do, and I think the sooner we learn that, the better off we are. So, I might tell my grandkids, don't go the traditional route. Don't take a gap year. Go, go be, go be a jazz musician for a year, or go off to Europe. You know, go, go visit Spain. Do something amazing and figure out what you want to do with your life. And then, after you had a little fun, then say, okay, I'm ready. I'm, I, I don't have to, I'm, uh, I, might, I might segue back into the more traditional route now and, and you know, get the pedigree I need to do well. But, but I, you know, um, engineer, uh, uh, police officer, uh, high school coach, teacher, I've had to work in a lot of businesses where it's very, you know, conform conformity driven. And I just can't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend that to anybody. Mm -hmm. Well, here's to no conformity, and um, and and thank you for being on, on this you, today. Brian. I really appreciate it, and um, I'm sure everybody's gonna love what you just said. And um, I know I always do. I just love sitting down and talking with you. So, thank all right. Well, cheers. Thank cheers, you so Brian. much. Thank I really you. appreciate it.